We're at the Newport High End Show, and with us is Steve Hoffman, a famous guru, mastering engineer, world-renowned young man, and a good-looking guy. Thank you, Paul. And Ted Smith, designer of DirectStream and other wonderful digital products. Yeah, thanks, Paul. And this is really the first time that Steve and Ted have actually met. And so I thought, you know, we'd just uh, videotape just a little discussion between the two for a minute. And maybe we could start by having Steve tell us a little something about what he does. And one of the questions that a lot of our uh, listeners and, and, and users ask a lot is, what is mastering and how does it work? Mastering is not quite understood. I, I realize that. It's like, uh, I use this analogy. Let's say that you were lent the Mona Lisa just you know by chance that you were lent the Mona Lisa and it came over here from the old country and you looked at it and here it is your very first inclination Paul would be to run outside and look at it in the sunlight and all you would see would be the old cracks and crevices and weirdnesses you know because it's old if you're speaking of the Mona Lisa it would be to hang it in the proper with the proper lighting so it looks the best. That's what mastering is. You you take a master tape and you make it sound the best that it possibly can. And basically that's what mastering is. It, it's the last but most crucial step in the recording process and it's least understood. And, and, and it involves EQing things or it, mixing? It, or? it involves, well in my line of work, you know, my specialty is old stuff. So it involves playing back the analog tape on just the right machine, uh, you know, it's like polishing a diamond, you know, it's almost all there, you know, you want to add one or two little more little chips and then you polish it off using equalization and, you know, getting your levels right and vacuum tubes in the chain, you know, to add a little extra ambience, you know, because uh, you might need that down the line when it comes back and you hear it. Um, you know, it's an interesting no set rule thing and uh, you know I'm doing it a long time and I work with you know Paul McCartney and Bob Dylan and Frank Sinatra and a lot of you know I've done thousands of albums you know all the cream of the music crop and uh, I enjoy it still and and you use a direct stream now in, in the mastering process. So yes, tell, me, tell us about that. I'd be happy to. The, the crucial part of it is when I'm home and I'm relaxing and the mastering studio sends me over my check disc. I'm, I'm not under the clock anymore. I'm at home. I can hear it on my own stereo that I know well. Put this in a CD player, and I'm going to go. Is this done, or do I need to do more? That's the crucial step. Is this done, or do I need to do more? And when I use my new PS Audio gear, it's it, and I am not exaggerating. It opened a window on the process that I was astounded that I could finally hear everything that I put in being played back correctly, ambient retrieval was all there. All those those little tiny imperceptible music cues that you lose with most digital playback were there, revealed for the first time. And I was very excited about that. And uh, I wrote a love letter to Bill Liebens and I said, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for this because it is, uh, it's, not only is it a great tool for me, but it also helps me understand if I've, you know, successfully completed this. And it, that's very important in so my line of work. Ted, when you, when you designed DirectStream, you you had some involvement with mastering and with with recording studios, if I remember correctly. Well, I was friends with Gus Skinnis, and I worked at Waveframe and companies like that. So I had a glancing uh, familiarity with that. But it was more the 
I got to hear some nice equipment at different places and stuff like that. And, you know, for me, there was just a big difference between like EMM gear and a lot of the digital gear out there. The EMM gear just drew me in and uh, sounded more realistic, and and so I, that's why I had it at the at the house, spent the money to get it, and that's one of the things I wanted when I was building something, and something that just really drew you into the music. And it typically is, uh, we're at a show and people are beating on the door to try and get in. So. First they want to come in. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so Steve, it is in the industry where you're doing and working with these great stars and these great these great acts, is there a, a, a lot of uh, consumer electronics like PS Audio or very little? What, what's typically used? What kind of electronics are used? You would be shocked. You would be shocked. You know, $500 CD players, bare Belden cable, uh, miles and miles of electronic wiring, uh, monitor speakers from 19... 70 start rolling off around 11k um, you know but that's in that environment and I'm used to that and I adjust my brain you know you know that okay I'm translating it in my head this is what it sounds like here this is what it's going to sound like in the real world and uh, so that's easy to overcome but I'm always shocked at their lack of understanding of what a really good playback system could do for their mixing, recording. And, you know, so I try and spread the word as much as I possibly can. Hey, you know, if you tried this, you could actually hear what you, what you were doing. It would save you time, it would save you money, it would uh, inspire you every day. And don't you have a, a, a blog that is, is rather popular? Well, I, I have a website forum, you know, we get a million hits a week at least, a million hits a week, everybody comes on there and... Uh, and, and who, people, people interested in recording? And audio music? files, um, just normal uh, rec record collectors, that's, you know, you have audio files and record collectors clashing over, you know, what gear they use, it's always entertaining, and we have 18 moderators to make sure that it stays entertaining, rather than just one of those, well, yeah, well, you suck, well, you suck worse, you know, all that stuff is not allowed, so. We may have to, uh, we may have to let the whole, we know, should we let them in? Why we'll we let them in while we're talking, stuff. it's okay. Yeah, we'll let I them in. They'll understand. What the heck. So, yeah, so it's, you know, it's always interesting when you have, um, uh, audio files and record collectors, music, fans all at the same time at the same place co-mingling and so what's what's the web address so we can go uh, visit www.stevehoffman.tv okay and we're all there you can be there too <laughs> watch out all right, guys. Well, thank you very much for You're having very taking a minute to talk. Thank you for making my life and job equal. Oh, that was Ted. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, man. I love you. <laughs> thank you.